Hey everyone, Ryan Salen, uh, diversity trainer and consultant, predominantly on transgender healthcare and um, lesbian, gay, bisexual issues. I'm going to do a little blog today uh, on the standards of care. As many may know and some may not, um, in September of this year, WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Healthcare, released um, a new version 7 of the standards of care. I was pretty excited to be attending WPATH and to listen to Eli Coleman uh, talk about the release of these new standards and the process that they went through to develop them. Uh, I was very pleased to hear that the committee wanted to make these new standards uh, guidelines and guidance for providers and not something that feels like a transgender person having to jump through hoops and loops uh, in order to access care. One of the ways that they did that was to remove the uh, sort of lineal guidelines and recommendations that they had in the previous version. For example, in the previous version, which I believe was released in 2001, and now it's 2011, the previous version stated that it's recommended that a person uh, seek mental health therapy by a therapist who specializes in gender issues and see them for 12 consecutive sessions or three months before uh, receiving a letter for hormone therapy. It recommended a real-life test or real-life experience. Uh, it recommended being on hormones for a year before looking to surgery such, like a, such as a hysterectomy, and recommended being on hormones for two years prior to looking into such things as a lower surgery for an F to M. However, they do recommend, and they still do recommend, being on hormones for two years for M to F individuals uh, before looking at breast augmentations just because the estrogen can really help that tissue develop over time. So in the new standards, version 7, they've removed the lineal guidelines. They've removed quantifying uh, what mental health therapy should look like for a transgender client. Um, now they still recommend a mental health assessment, but assessment could be one session prior to starting hormones. Um, this does not mean that mental health therapy isn't important for individuals because I definitely am a huge advocate for therapy if clients are able to find a therapist that understands transgender issues um, and is willing to let the, the client lead them through their journey instead of trying to put them into boxes, which I would hope as well that providers would let the client lead them on the client's own personal journey instead of putting them into boxes. This is something that I think the WPATH committee really understands. Uh, even a new title for the standards of care recognizes gender nonconforming individuals uh, instead of just pushing people into boxes such as identifying as F to M or N to F, uh, recognizing the variety of trans identities out there and the variety of needs, desires, and choices as far as what a transition looks like if someone chooses a transition or what different medical treatments look like for someone uh, even who does not choose a transition. So if you're working with a provider and they start mentioning the diagnosis of gender identity disorder or mentioning that you should be in therapy for six months before starting hormones or that you should fulfill certain criteria um, before having a surgery, ask them what standards of care they're using, if they're using any for their guidelines. Um, and then also ask them if they're aware of the new version. The new version I think is very helpful. It's a long version, it's around 120 pages, but there's about 20 pages of resources there. But it's very easy to read and very affirming for the trans community. So along with asking your providers, if you're feeling like you're being uh, put against um, barriers due to what they perceive as what the guidelines should be, uh, I also recommend that people in the trans community review these standards just to educate yourself uh, and to allow you to have a little bit more um, empowerment in your transition process. If you have certain questions about the standards or wondering about certain criteria, please feel free to email me at rsalens at gmail.com. Um, I think it's pretty amazing what's happening in our world for the trans community, and I'm very excited to be a part of that. Thank you.